With more electric motorcycle options on the market than ever before, more riders are awakening to the fun, easy riding nature of these powerful machines. For a long time though, their high cost has priced out many riders. But times, they're changing my friends. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today I'm reviewing the CSC RX1E electric motorcycle. Come along with us while we check it out. The CSC RX1E is the first highway capable electric motorcycle in the US that can hit 80 miles per hour while simultaneously coming in at a steal of a price. Compared to bikes like the Zero FXE, which I love, but costs closer to 13,000 bucks, the CSC RX1E is priced at just eight and a half thousand dollars. Though the company is even currently offering a $500 discount with the promotional code ELECTREK bringing the price down to just $8,000. Now, does that compare to gas bikes? No, of course not. Electric motorcycles are still a bit more expensive, though they also save you money in the long run with the reduced maintenance, since there's less to go wrong with them due to significantly fewer moving parts, as well as lower fuel costs. A typical motorcycle fill-up at a gas station costs around 15 bucks or so, depending on your tank size and gas prices. Electricity prices vary as well, but you can recharge this bike for around a dollar depending on your local prices. That's pretty wild. Now compared to the flagship electric motorcycles like those from Zero, Energica, etc., the RX-1E here only has modest power. The liquid-cooled motor is rated for 18 kilowatts of peak power, or around 24 horsepower. A Livewire S2 Del Mar will go from standing to 60 miles an hour in 3 seconds flat. The RX-1E, it takes closer to 8 to 9 seconds. That's fine for a highway on-ramp, but it's not the same thrilling acceleration. But that modest power means better range. The Livewire S2 Del Mar has 70% more battery capacity, but nearly identical city range, since its higher power motor draws more battery. The RX-1E here, which sports a 6.16 kilowatt hour battery, has a 112 mile max city range. Though keep in mind that you have to stick to honest city speeds of 25 to 30 miles an hour to go that far. I found that when averaging closer to 50 miles an hour of speed, meaning a mix of highway and city riding, I was getting between 50 to 60 miles of range. So you can see how riding at top speed on the interstate is really going to cut into your range. But that's okay by me because it speaks to what the bike is really meant for. This is not a long range e-bike for touring. It's not really meant for canyon carving. Though I did do some of that when I first test rode another RX-1E in California, and it was definitely fun for that. But what this bike is really meant for is as a commuter and a utility motorcycle. That means for someone who perhaps lives in the suburbs and needs to hop on the interstate for 20 miles a day to get to work in the city. It'd be great for that. It'd be great for taking your girl out on date night, or for picking up groceries on your way home thanks to those cargo boxes, etc. Though as cool as those cargo boxes and crash bars are, since they come as included accessories built into the price, I wouldn't get too excited just yet. Now I love this bike, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of great things about it, but one thing that seems to be a bit of a corner cutter are the cargo boxes here. They add a lot of utility, you know, they're great for that, but they're just not super high quality. They're molded plastic, now they are keyed alike, which is nice, so it's the same key as the ignition on the bike, but they just, they feel very plasticky, uh, they're not super sturdy, you know, you can kind of like bend them with your hand a bit, so these are not high security, you can probably pry them open easily with a uh, screwdriver. So don't think of these as high quality boxes, think of them more like just some extra added cargo space where you can put, you know, several grocery bags on each side, or do some general utility type riding that you might do with a commuter bike. Not a super strong or high security solution. So yeah, I wouldn't leave my wallet locked in one of them all day, but I would rely on them every day for holding my backpack on the interstate on the way to work, or bringing home the groceries when my wife texts me at the shopping list. And speaking of included accessories and features, there's a lot of value here. That motor, it's liquid cooled for higher efficiency and longer operation. See that center stand? That's a rare feature on big bikes like this. Which, by the way, the bike is quite hefty at 430 to 460 pounds, depending on whether you leave the boxes and crash bars on. There are other great features here too, like that belt drive for quiet operation, the needle gauge speedometer, which is delightfully retro and looks great next to the LCD readout for the other info, the inverted front fork and monoshock rear, the 17 inch cast aluminum wheels, Bosch ABS braking on those hydraulic disc brakes, and the list goes on. It's really a nicely made bike, 
even if it looks significantly more adventure-y than the street bike that it truly is. Though even there, I kind of dig it. I mean, adventure bikes are great because they put you in an upright and very comfortable position with a good view of the road. That's what the CSC RX-1E does here too, and I find it to be a much more comfortable position than most street bikes that have me more crouched and can even leave me with stiff legs or neck after riding for too long. The RX-1E just feels more comfortable with a very relaxed, upright riding position and it gives you a great view around you. And yet the 30.9 inch seat height means I can still flat foot it at stops and I'm not particularly tall at 5 foot 7 or 170 centimeters. But it's still a big bike so taller guys are going to be comfortable on it. Ultimately, for under $8,000, I think this is a great addition to the electric motorcycle market. But you have to keep in mind what this bike is meant for. It's a commuter motorcycle first and foremost. It's not designed for long distance travel. There are electric motorcycles with nearly four times this much battery if long distance is what you're after. Though they also cost three to four times the price. This bike is meant for someone who predominantly commutes between cities and suburbs and needs to get on the highway to be able to do it. Yeah, it's fun at top speed, don't get me wrong, but this is really a commuter and utility bike first and foremost. For that kind of use, I think it's perfect. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the CSC RX-1E. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.